Hello everyone, I'm Terry Duke and welcome to my channel. It's hard to believe, but Bannerlord has already been out for almost 4 years now, and while, to be honest, Torben still dominates in terms of total conversion mods, there's always a new Bannerlord mod coming out to remind us of its massive potential. Last summer I tried a bunch of smaller mods meant to improve base Bannerlord, but these mods have been coming out more and more, and the selection is quite varied now. So if you're new to Bannerlord or ready to pick it up again, here are some cool mods to play Bannerlord in 2024. As always, if you enjoyed the content, feel free to subscribe and check out my other Bannerlord mod videos. Now again, these mods mostly provide small but enjoyable changes to the base game. I have listed them not in order of preference, but in terms of size and ambition. A lot of them are very tiny, so I'll just get them out of the way right now. If you're tired of banners on spears lacking proper animations, well, get yourself banner fix. It'll do just that, fix the banners. If you want to make night battles a little more visually interesting, get perfect fire arrows, and your archers will shoot fire arrows during night battles, and it actually does look pretty cool. And if you're tired of the vanilla armor, you want a wider selection, you can get the Conjunction of Spheres mod. I have no idea why it's called like this, but basically it's a collection of armors from other mods. So with this mod you can be a samurai, as shown in the thumbnails, but there's also armors from Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, and The Witcher. So with this mod, you can get yourself some cool armors, and that's pretty much it. And yeah, these were the minor visual mods. That was quick, now let's move on to quality of life mods. In previous videos I mentioned Bandits Nation as a mod that just adds a ton of bandits, but if you want something more challenging without these endless groups of bandits just swarming the entire map, Dangerous Bandit Parties does a pretty good job too. This mod won't have as many bandit groups, but it does allow you to control the size of the bandit groups as well as the quality of their raiders. The occasional large bandit group can be challenging early on, but it also makes for great practice for your troops to get experience before going to actual war, and bandit layers still have minimal troops inside, so they can still be assaulted early on. Another mod I cannot live without anymore is Better Time. This mod adds an extra speed up button to the world map so it goes much faster, similar to how you could speed up the game in Warband. But that's not even the full speed, you can actually set the speed yourself with the mod configuration menu, so you can set it to your liking, you'll never have to worry about it again. Another thing you won't have to worry about anymore is losing relations with everyone in the game and ruining your reputation whenever you execute prisoners. And that's thanks to Execution Relation Remover. For real, it's annoying how punishing executing lords can be, whether they're good or evil. So what this mod does is essentially remove all the penalties so you can go chop chop. There are different versions of the mod and my preferred one would be where the only relation loss occurs with the clan of the person you executed, which sounds fair to me, but it also didn't work with my game, so I had to go with the standard version that just removes all penalties completely. Hopefully I can find a fix for the version I want soon, but in the meantime, if you want to execute lords and not face any consequences for it, just get this mod, it's great. Moving on, this is another mod that is really good to have, this is Battle Minimap. This is a mod that already existed in Warband that allows you to visualize the deployment of troops while in battle. The map is at the top left, and it kind of fades in a way that does not feel intrusive, and it shows troop disposition so much better than Warband ever did. It's very useful overall to see enemy troop movements or to see where the remaining fleeing enemies are, so you can bet I'll be adding this mod to all my new games from now on. And finally, for the nice quality of life mods, this is Immersive Battlefields. What this mod does basically is add voice acting to all the sergeants leading the divisions in your army. So whenever you shout a command, the sergeants will repeat it back to the troops. Charge! Charge! The mod also adds horn sounds for charges, and overall it makes battles more immersive, as it felt kind of weird that only you would be shouting commands. You can also hear commands of the enemy army, so it really makes communication on the battlefield feel more crucial. So we got visual mods, we got quality of life mods, here's my final three mods which actually had new layers of features to the game. The first one I want to talk about is simply called Horses. This mod adds more options to customize your horse in terms of colors and giving it a name, but as well as the option to bond with it, which gives you more control in battle, but also the ability to horse kick enemies around you, which is pretty awesome. To customize the horse itself and see your bond progress, the mod also adds stables in towns where you get all those options. As said by the modder, Mountain Blade puts a lot of emphasis on the blade and not nearly enough on the mount, so I think the mod is a great addition to any campaign as it really lets you make the best of your horse. It would actually be really cool to see the sum mod in future total conversions as well, especially for fantasy mounts, so there's potential there for sure. Now, I've talked about Hot Butter before, the official NSFW mod for Bannerlord, and how I mostly use it for the feature of using Ladies of the Night to boost party morale. 
However, it turns out there is other mods being built on top of Hot Butter, and this next one is simply called Captivity Events. Captivity Events is a group of some mods made by several modders, all built into one, that adds custom events, some not safe for work, others not, from having prisoners in your party, or for when you yourself are captured. Now yes, some of these events are explicit, but many of them are not, and you can actually use the mod configuration menu to select what kind of unique events you want to happen in either scenarios. The mod also allows more management of the prisoner system, such as choosing yourself the likelihood of prisoners escaping, either from your party or from your dungeons. So a captivity event just adds several layers of content to the game, it'll make getting captured somewhat more interesting, but it can also make holding prisoners more challenging, and the page on Nexus frequently adds extensions to the mods, adding new events to the game. But finally, one of the best mods I've discovered while making this video is undoubtedly the Realistic Battle mod. It's been out for a while, but it really does change a lot to the battle gameplay. So basically with this mod, fighting is meant to be more realistic. Armor actually protects you from damage quite considerably, whereas parts of the body that are left exposed are extremely vulnerable. The mod also changes the way NPCs fight drastically. Instead of charging at each other, units are far more likely to fight protectively, leading to extensive skirmishes, and I really love how it works out in battle. Additionally, the AI has been improved a lot. Armies will use strategies in battle, such as retreating and regrouping before charging again. Troops will also directly use ladders and sieges rather than wait for other siege engines to catch up. And the latest version also includes a massive overhaul of vanilla troop trees, changing the gear of all units. Most noticeably, a lot of archers will wear shields strapped to their shoulder for passive defense, and it looks pretty good. And the final main addition to the gameplay is the balance mechanic, seen as a green gauge under the life gauge. Basically, as you attack and block, you gradually lose your balance, which can eventually cause you to either stumble or for enemies to hit through your block and hit you nonetheless. It can also mean you'll drop your weapons, or worse, you can fall off your horse very easily. Because of that, it really changes the way you fight, focusing less on just swinging and instead looking for openings in the enemy's defense and overall being more cautious. Overall, of all the mods in this video, Realistic Battle mod takes the cake. But to be clear, it really depends on your playing style. If you're looking to keep it simple, don't bother with this mod. But if you're looking to make the core of the game more challenging in interesting ways, this is a hard recommend. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching everyone, I know this is somewhat short, but keep in mind, the year just begun, and I did make other Bannerlord mod videos you can check out, so if you happen to know some really cool niche mods for Bannerlord, make sure to let me know in the comments for future videos, and hopefully you will subscribe, and I'll see you next time.